So it's Friday night and I'm out in York and I'm excited and that's because Friday night is curry night. So let's go and find a decent feed. So here it is, best curry house in York. Friends are already inside. Time to go and have a really good meal. So I had a great curry out in York the other night and I thought what would be good to do this afternoon is to try and cook a curry here at home and talk a bit about the chemistry that goes into a curry that makes it a surprisingly healthy food. Now I'm not claiming this is an authentic curry okay but this is consider it Professor Dave's recipe for curry. Now to start any great curry what we need is some alliums. And so by alliums what I mean is we need some onions and we need some garlic. Garlic contains natural antibacterial compounds uh, called allicin and allostatin. What you can see from this structure of allicin is that it's actually quite an unusual looking compound. It has this sulfur-sulfur linkage and if you're a chemist what I want you to do is think what kind of functional group might that actually be? Fundamentally however garlic this allicin has an incredible antibacterial effect. Extracts of garlic containing allicin is even active against MRSA, the most resistant forms of bacteria. People have made mouthwashes in the past out of raw garlic, believe it or not, and shown that the garlic mouthwash has antibacterial properties. Of course, a garlic mouthwash has some other rather unpleasant side effects like taste and so on. There is a question mark over whether when you cook garlic cloves, the allicin remains intact or whether it decomposes. So it's not clear how much of the antibacterial properties end up in the finished dish, but there's no doubt that garlic is a superfood. So I've fried off the onions until they're beginning to brown, and now I'm going to add the garlic. You don't add it too soon, otherwise you'll burn the garlic, and then you really will lose any goodness that the garlic has in it. What we have here are spice ingredients like cinnamon and turmeric and we also have some flavourings such as ginger and some spices like chilies. and we're going to look at the kind of chemicals that can be found in these different ingredients and the positive effects that they can have on your health. We're going to start by considering cinnamon. Cinnamon is from the bark of the cinnamon tree, it's rolled dried bark and it imparts quite a sweet flavour to a curry. Now the bark from the cinnamon tree contains active volatile compounds which give the aroma to the cinnamon uh, extract and the most important of those compounds is the one you're looking at now, cinnamaldehyde. As you can see it's quite a simple compound and it's responsible for that sweet aroma and all the taste that you get out of the cinnamon bark. One of the healthy things in cinnamon is that it contains compounds called polyphenols. And these polyphenols help to boost the performance of insulin in your body. And it's insulin that's involved in the way your body deals with glucose. And it's believed that cinnamon extract containing polyphenols can really significantly help the performance of the insulin in your body. So the second spice that I want to think about is turmeric. And turmeric is one of the most exciting spices in a curry. It has a deep colour and it has some really interesting potential health benefits. The active component in turmeric is called curcumin. Interestingly, you'll see the structure is related to the structure of cinnamaldehyde from the cinnamon bark. And there is a relationship between the way these molecules are actually synthesised within the different plants. Curcumin is one of the most investigated plant extracts in medicinal science currently. It's being investigated, just for a few examples, in pancreatic cancer, multiple myeloma, colon cancer, psoriasis, Alzheimer's disease, cystic fibrosis. There's a whole range of diseases which could benefit from curcumin. Curcumin, actually, if you ate the powder, turmeric, you wouldn't absorb very much curcumin. That's because it doesn't dissolve very well in water. It's very hydrophobic. It dissolves well in oil, and that's why a little bit of oil in your curry will help you to absorb the goodness out of the turmeric powder. So if you want to have a really healthy curry, and you want to cut down on the oil, you won't get all the benefits out of the spices. So the flavour of ginger is also based on compounds very similar to cinnamaldehyde and to curcumin. 
It's long been recognised that ginger has a degree of anti-nausea capacity, and it's been medicinally investigated, for example, whether extract of ginger has any benefit to patients suffering on chemotherapy drugs. In chilli peppers, the active compound is capsaicin. It's capsaicin that gives chilies their heat. And if you look at the structure of capsaicin, it's very similar to the flavourants in turmeric and cinnamon and ginger and all these other ingredients. Believe it or not, capsaicin, the extract from chilli peppers, can be used as a painkiller. It deadens the nerve endings in a painful region, particularly of skin. And so capsaicin has seen applications in those ways. It's also been considered as an ingredient in pepper sprays to kind of deter riots and things like that. All I know is that it's capsaicin that gives chilies the heat, which is what you're really going to need to have a good curry. Looking at the structure of all these compounds, one of the things that I want you to do is to try and name all the functional groups in the flavour extracts from these four different spices and flavourants. So name the functional groups if you're a chemist. So now I've browned the onions. I'm going to add, and the garlic's been in there, I'm going to add a little bit more oil to help draw the flavours out of the spices. And then I'm going to add my cinnamon stick, my turmeric. I'm also going to add two other spices to this that are really going to help emphasise the curry nature of the dish. The first one is ground fenugreek, and the second one, ground cumin. I need a little bit more of that. You're going to allow those spices to fry and you'll smell the flavours coming off them. You'll smell the aromas. You're also, at the same time, going to add the chilies and your ginger into the dish. Once you've fried your spices down, you add a little bit more oil into the pan to stop things sticking. And then I've got some cubed lamb that I'm going to add straight into the pan. And you want that cubed lamb to take up the flavour of all those toasting, roasting spices. This is also a good time to add a little bit of salt to the dish for seasoning. So I've been browning the lamb for three or four minutes. You're not cooking the lamb through at this point. You're going to cook it through as you do the curry. You're just browning it off, sealing the surface, allowing it to take in the flavour. Then you add some chopped tomatoes to this dish. There's about three chopped tomatoes there. Just use cheap standard tomatoes. There's a bit of acidity in those tomatoes and it's really going to help the flavour of the curry come together. And once you've fried off the tomatoes for just a couple of minutes, you're going to add a glassful of water. Just put a bit of liquid in there. I'm then going to turn the heat down on the curry, allow it to come up to a boil, cover the curry, I'm going to leave it for a good couple of hours to just bubble away on a very low simmer. You might need to top up the water from time to time as that process goes on. So the final ingredient I'm going to put in my curry is a very non-traditional one, mint. Um, of course, normally in India you probably finish a curry with some fresh coriander herb. But I'm an Englishman, I've got a nice lamb curry going, and what I want to put in it is a bit of mint. The active ingredient in mint is called menthol. You're looking at the structure of menthol now. And you should see, if you're a chemist, that it's got three chiral centres, three chiral carbon atoms. What I want you to do is draw all the possible stereoisomers of menthol. All we need to do now is finish the curry off. I've boiled it right down with the lid off to the point where it's sputtering at me and there's just a little bit of liquid left. I'm then going to take it off the heat I'm going to add a few spoonfuls of natural yoghurt. This will both help counteract the chilli and make the curry slightly creamy. And then I'm going to stir through my chopped mint leaves just to finish it off with a really fresh and fragrant flavour. And that is it. Professor Dave's amazing curry. Oh yeah, and a free meal for the advertising would be much appreciated.